and welcome. I decided to redo my Vulkan tutorials in C++ for several reasons. Firstly, although Vulkan is language independent, it's probably not suited all that well to Python. The main flavor of Vulkan is control over memory and scheduling. In Python, a language without pointers, this is especially difficult and hacky. Secondly, Vulkan is about getting the most performance possible out of the silicon. While there's an argument to be made that Python could be used as a scripting language for game design, with Vulkan doing the heavy lifting in the background, the industry standard is to pair Vulkan with C++ for good reason, because performance matters. Thirdly, it goes without saying that redoing my tutorials gives me a chance to explain topics in more detail where I was a bit vague before and um, I'll call myself out a little bit. I did make some mistakes in my previous uh, Vulkan series, but anyway. So before we begin, what is Vulkan? Simply put, Vulkan is a new and exciting graphics API which was developed by Kronos Group, the developers of OpenGL. Vulkan lets developers get more graphics performance out of their hardware by taking the plane off autopilot, so to speak. For the most part, Vulkan uses the same language and conventions as OpenGL, with the added work of controlling a lot of the intermediate steps, which our standard OpenGL context hides. It's similar to writing a piece of code in assembly to get more speed. As a matter of fact, if you've ever wanted to learn assembly just for the intellectual challenge to see what's going on under the hood, then Vulkan might be for you. One downside to Vulkan is that writing Vulkan code is very bulky. For instance, getting a triangle on the screen will take about 900 lines of code. For this reason, this tutorial series will seem quite slow. Very often, I'll just examine a few lines of code and explain how this fits into the bigger picture. Every video is a puzzle piece, and in the end, we will get something cool. To get up and running, we'll first need to install the Vulkan SDK. Uh, so we'll pop onto Google and we'll search uh, Vulkan SDK and it brings up all my search history. I wonder what was there. Anyway, um, so the Lunar, Lunar G is the place to go. We'll head here and it's been a while since I downloaded Vulkan, so I'm going to download this again fresh. We'll download developer tools for Windows. Yeah, that's fine. Um, SDK, Windows installer, this one looks good. Okay, so that's downloaded. Um, we can then run the installer and it's nothing too unusual. Great, so that's installed. Um, Now what we do is we head to the default install location, which is C, Vulkan SDK, and here's the new one. And the way we test that this is working is we go down here and there's a program called Cube, VK Cube. We run that, that's our hello world. Awesome, so our system can support Vulkan. Cool, so we've got Vulkan installed but we are also going to need a windowing library. In this case, I'm gonna go with GLFW. If you've done any work with um, OpenGL, GLFW, GL framework is, um, that's the one to go with. Um, other ones such as SDL, apparently they also work with Vulkan, but in my experience, it's a little, little harder to get that running, but anyway. So what does GLFW do? It pretty much lets us create a window, handles mouse and keyboard input, and otherwise stays out of the way. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just, you know, Google search for GLFW, and I grabbed pre-compiled binary, 64-bit, unzip that in our downloads, and we get something like this. Awesome. Um, so then, okay, then we can just grab that, and copy it over wherever we want. So over here, um, yep, okay, that's fine, we've copied it in, and we are ready to begin. So, fun, fun, fun. 
let's open up Visual Studio over here. Okay, so I'm going to step through um, the process of like setting up a new project and linking everything. Sounds a bit silly, but when I was learning um, C++ as a teenager, I always found that this was the most intimidating part. Um, so we're going to go through it once and then, then we're good with it. So we'll create an empty project and what do we have? This is today. We're just doing some really basic code. Um, and I've made a folder called Vulcan two, and I'm going to put it in there. Okay, great. So then we hit create. And again, it's created it over here. And no, I do not want to update at the moment. Right, okay. So I'll just grab my pre written code, I'll paste it in there. Awesome. And then we will go add existing item. We'll add the code. And there it is. But it's not going to like it at this point because we haven't linked everything up properly. So um, for my project, I'm going to go with 64 bit. So make sure I'm doing that. And then I'll go to properties. And yep, make sure I'm doing all configurations in active 64 bit. Good. Um, some of these tutorials are going to use um, slightly higher language features. So I'll put that to ISO 17. That's fine. And now we have the real stuff. So um, we need the include directories and the library directories to start with. So we'll go to the include directories. We will look at, uh, we'll need GLFW for a start. So we'll grab that include folder, put that in. We will also need the include folder for Vulkan. So we put that in, we hit apply, and then all of those errors will go away. However, the program won't run because it doesn't, still doesn't know where the libraries are because it's all well and good to include a header, but that header has to um, link to a library. So we'll do the same thing again. Uh, so we are using Visual Studio, uh, we're using Visual Studio 19. So we'll grab that folder and then we'll go to Vulkan. And we'll grab the include folder there. That is perfectly fine. Oh, what am I, what am I saying? Not the include the library folder, lib. Okay, good. Okay, so that should be good. However, it's still not going to work. Um, so as a demonstration, let's run it now. It won't work. Yeah, so what do we have? Unresolved external symbol. So what it's doing is, yes, it has the um, include folders, it has the lib folders, but it needs to know um, what the lib files are that we're really interested in. So we um, go again to properties and then to linker and input and we go to additional dependencies. Now this part, I hate it, it's hard to remember sometimes, it's a bit gimmicky, but we can always just pull up the files and look at these. So we're looking in lib and what we want is we want vulcan1.lib. So we go back here, additional dependencies, vulcan1.lib, and then for glfw, it is glfw3.lib. So, okay. 
So let's run it now and it should work. And indeed it does. Awesome. Okay. So let's jump into this. What do we have at this point? So this is really just basic code. There's actually no Vulkan stuff at this point. Um, we're just setting up the GLFW window. Okay. So what do we have? Right. So yeah, over this, over the series of the, over this video series, we will be expanding on all of this and adding more functions and things. Um, also, the purpose of these videos is not to teach C++. However, as this is the first time I'm talking about it on the channel, I will naturally be explaining things along the way. All right, so uh, the core code at this point is fairly straightforward and doesn't really involve any Vulkan features. There's two important features to mention. Firstly, um, because GLFW stands for GL Framework, um, when we create a window, by default, GLFW also creates um, an OpenGL context, which is a binding to the OpenGL library. We don't want to do that. We want to do Vulkan. So um, what we do is on this line here, we tell the window that we do not want to run an API. That means don't create an OpenGL context. Create a window without a renderer. Um, secondly, okay, over here we have this variable called window and we're defining that with a star. Now that star is what's called a pointer declaration. Um, so it's not, this is not really storing all of the data of the window. It's storing the um, number, which points to the location in virtual memory where that data is stored. Um, there's a number of reasons for this. Major advantage is it speeds up function calls. When this variable window is passed um, to a function as an argument, we only need to copy over the number of the memory location in virtual memory where it's stored. Um, we do not have to load up the call stack with all of the data members of that uh, class instance. Um, that's the primary reason. So uh, as you can see, we create a window, get a handle to it. And then in the main loop, we're constantly checking if that window should close. That's basically um, the X button. Then we call this poll events. So every single mouse movement, click, uh, keyboard stroke, all of that, that goes on a queue like a buffer. And uh, those events are handled. And then this poll events basically flushes the buffer. So it gets rid of, it clears out any events which haven't been handled yet. And that just stops your um, list of events from stacking up. Okay, uh, we also have a cleanup function that just yeah does what we would expect. Um, and note that we're doing a try catch because anything along here, as we expand this, could throw an exception. And yeah, we want to handle that. Okay, but uh, that's more that is more or less it for now. As always, code is linked in the description of the video, so you can check it out, get a bit more familiar with it. Um, all the best, and see you next time. Bye.